Hello, everybody. My name is Andrew Colombro, here again from Savvy Services for the Blind for another amazing episode of Meet the Blind for this month's National Blind Awareness Month. I'm here, joined alongside me is Savvy Zone, Kevin Lowe. Kevin, thank you so much for joining me today and happy Friday. Thanks for the invite. Looking forward to the weekend. Of course. And um, just to kick things off, uh, what is your role at Savvy? Uh, currently, I'm an access technology instructor at Savvy which means I teach people how to use computers. Nice. And um, how would you say is a day in the life? What is a day in the life of Kevin Lowe? A uh, day in the life of Kevin Lowe is much too long. <laughs> <laughs> um, get up, uh, get up in the morning and uh, help get my kids ready for school. Um, I have four children, ages 14, 14, 11, eight, and five, 14, 11, eight, and five, sorry. And, uh, you know, help get the younger ones ready for school, get them off to, to their respective schools. And then uh, I head to work. And over the past eight months or so, I've been doing a lot of work from home, uh, connecting to students via Zoom and telephone, uh, given the coronavirus pandemic. Um, and then on Fridays, I go into the office and work from work from the office. So I can have a little bit better internet connection for some group classes that I teach. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> with that, so um, with the types of group classes, um, what are the types of like programs or like classes that you teach? Um, so along with the access technology classes, so access technology, uh, I teach individuals how to use what are called screen readers. Uh, it's an application that makes everything on the computer have a spoken feedback. Main application we use for that is an application called JAWS. And so I teach people how to use the Windows environment with JAWS. Uh, we usually look at how to use Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, how to surf the web uh, with a screen reader uh, with the main goal of getting students ready to either go to college or go back to work. Awesome. Yeah. And um, you're also talking about your family as well. You said you had um, four kids. Um, talk a little bit about your family background. And um, I know that for a fact, for the viewers knowing um, a fun fact is that Kevin Lowe is a triplet, which um, I'd love to hear more about. Okay. So I was born uh, over at TMC here in Tucson. Um, my brother and sister and I were about four and a half or so minutes apart, and uh, we were we were born two months early. And so I, uh, we had a few medical complications at the beginning. We were in incubators. Um, I was in an incubator for five months, I believe, um, before being sent home from the hospital, and then. Growing up with them, uh, we went to school together until first grade, or and then I lost vision and ended up at a school for the blind, where I spent eight years of my education. And then in high school, I rejoined my brother and sister, and uh, in in public high school and finished out high school. We don't do a ton together at this point, but. Uh, you know, they have they have children. I have nieces and nephews. Um, we get together every few years or so because they they live in Kentucky, and uh, me being out here, it's a little far to travel sometimes. Yeah, and uh, Kentucky um, is that like where you grew up, or? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. I grew up in Kentucky. Uh, we we were here till I was about five, and then we moved to Kentucky, where um, grew up in a beautiful little town called Berea. And uh, right on the edge of, of Appalachia, lots of trees, rolling hills. Um, it's horse country over there. So, you know, knew lots of people who did, who did uh, work with horses growing up. Um, it was a nice, quiet life. And what was, what was neat for me, I guess, too, is I lived in a small town, but then the school for the blind that I went to was in Louisville, Kentucky, which is the largest city in the state. Yeah. So I got to experience not only small town life with my family, but I also got to experience medium-sized city 
uh, life. And that was a pretty eye-opening experience for me because I got to experience public transit. I got to experience a lot of the trappings of, of cities that you don't always get in the small uh, community that I grew up in. Yeah, no, I can relate to that. Um, for me, I grew up in uh, Seattle, Washington, and so I've always lived really close to the city, um, just a couple minutes north of the city, but I've always been more of an urban kid myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I know it's interesting. Yeah. I've never been to Kentucky myself. I've always wanted to um, head out. I've always wanted to like see the states over there. Um, but it also, I knew that <clears throat> you're quite a big Steelers fan. Um, so I'm just curious, how, how, how did that come to be? Um, so all of my all of my sports fandom uh, has nothing to do with Arizona or Kentucky at this point, or professional sports, I guess. Um, my family's from Tucson. Uh, my both my father and mother were born in Tucson, and there were no professional sports in the area when they were kids. And so my father uh, became a Steelers fan growing up. Uh, you know they had that those Super Bowl runs in the seventies, and then. Uh, my grandfather was a New York Yankees fan. And so my dad became a New York Yankees fan. And then I became a New York Yankees fan. So Yankees and Steelers, I come by them through family heritage, I guess you could say. Because, uh, well, when my, parent, when my parents were, were little, there were no teams out here, uh, you know, not even in California at that point. So I guess they found whatever teams were hot at the time and we've stuck with them. Yeah, and the, I mean, the Yankees definitely were that team. <laughs> I mean, they, they mm -hmm. were winning the pennant year in and year out. For me, um, like my family, we have season tickets for Seattle Mariners, but it's the Mariners. We have the longest playoff drought, so it's been rough uh, these last couple of years. But mm -hmm. I'm still true to the blue. I, I still definitely. Believe. But, um, yeah, I think this about wraps up this year's episode of Meet the Blind. Kevin, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Everyone, everyone watching this, have a good rest of your day as well, and we'll stay tuned for another episode.